ahead and get into our first questions. And just to say, um, uh, Comrade uh, Jesse, you are also, you know, able to please feel free to um, participate, you know, in discussion and, and comrades, please direct your questions to um, either of our panelists um, on today. And I also want to acknowledge um, some donations to our super chat on YouTube uh, from uh, uh, username Unemployed Scholar, uh, Comrade uh, Sayero and Comrade Mwazy. Thank you so much for your uh, donations today. And I will uh, continue to shout out um, donating to the Super Chat or to PayPal um, 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 dot Omali taught me. Uh, yes, Omali taught me. So um, and all that information is in the chat section in, in terms of how you can contribute to, you know, this study. So thank you so much for those who've made your contributions up to now. And um, Chairman, um, I just wanted to uh, take this question that came in from last week um, as well. We wanted to, to make sure that we um, we had some questions roll in from last week that we wanted to make sure we were able to take today. And I think this is an important question um, because it is dealing with the whole question of the anti-colonial free speech movement and, and these different attacks that have happened um, as a consequence of the expression of anti-colonial free speech. And that is around the question of Alex Saab. And uh, this came from comrade Alex Suarez, who's with Revolutionary Alliance. Um, and uh, asked this question last week about um, how do we think we, you know, how do you think we can free Alex Saab from the empire? So maybe we could just talk a little bit about, you know, um, Alex Saab, you know, the uh, that, you know, that uh, that case and and how it, you know, relates to the whole struggle that we're engaged in. Uhuru. Uhuru. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, uh, Comrade Suarez, uh, for for the question. It's an important question, and it is a question that also. Uh, reflects on a general weakness of the uh, the struggle uh, uh, inside the United States. Uh, the fact is that um, uh, the that uh, their uh, the ability to do what they're doing to uh, Alex Suarez uh, relates. I'm sorry, to Alex Saab uh, is connected to the ability to do uh, what they're uh, doing to the Uhuru Three yep. uh, and to uh, the Tampa Five. Uh, uh, it's uh, it's an assault uh, on struggles, and you're talking about the right to free speech. And I think the issue of Saab, you know, does uh, fit into that context. That anything that violates the narrative of the colonial powers uh, uh, is illegal. And so they they could take a Saab, a, a, a Venezuelan diplomat, and actually kidnap him and uh, and throw him illegally in prison. And I say illegal based on laws that uh, that have been created uh, by the colonial powers themselves. It's an illegal thing that they've done. Uh, and uh, the response, of course, is that we have to do everything we can. We have to do the typical traditional stuff, uh, you know, having demonstrations and mobilization and making sure that the case is uh, on all of our platforms. Uh, uh, it, it has to be recognized. Uh, and part of uh, the process of doing that, just as it is about the Uhuru Three. Uh, is that uh, we uh, really expose this profound contradiction of, uh, of a system and and uh, which and a government which on the one hand proclaims itself to be the arbingers of the, the the holding up and advancing uh, struggles of uh, freedom and free speech etc uh, are doing just the opposite so it, it is a contradiction that when really uh, truly uh, brought to the service in a most uh, dynamic way, especially during uh, a time like this when crisis abounds throughout the system where uh, there are all kinds of cross currents of contradictions and struggles and interests being made manifest. Uh, I just think it's really important uh, to, to hold these cases up uh, like that. But the critical thing uh, is for us to uh, build organization on the ground that's not just about defending against this crime or that crime, but identifying and recognizing uh, with the work that we do, the organization that we build, the relationships that we have, uh, that we are dealing with a social system that has uh, has no redeeming qualities and that the ability ultimately of the people to be free uh, is to build freedom movements and to unite uh, with the colonized people organization structurally doing everything that we can uh, to make sure that the struggle against the social system itself uh, uh, gets stronger uh, so that we can disappear the social system and not just find ourselves uh, forever and perpetually fighting against systems, which is uh, symptoms, which is what uh, our oppressors would have us to do. So, Carmen Alex, I think that uh, one of the reasons that the Uhuru movement came under assault 
is because we were not just talking about uh, 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 exposing contradictions uh, uh, by having protests and things like that, but actually engage in struggle uh, to change the relationship that African people practically on the ground materially have with the social system itself, negating colonialism itself with all the work that we do. And the struggle for free speech has to be something that's that designed uh, to negate uh, uh, the influence and power of colonialism. And, uh, I, you know, so hopefully that was not too, uh, that was that answer, that response, uh, comment, Alex, was not too, uh, uh, was not too obscure. I do think we have to do everything we can, put it on our agenda, expose the world, write about it, talk about it, let everybody know about it, uh, uh, and which is really important during this time. But I think the bigger thing that we have to do uh, is to build a revolutionary organization, to build and to establish relationship and supporting uh, anti-colonial organization movement, not just the concept, uh, but the actual uh, organizations. Uh, so, Uhuru. Correct.